Good day, Art Benedetto, Superintendent of Schools. Joe Piccarillo, Assistant Superintendent. We're here to try to give our community an update on where we stand on numerous issues, but especially about the reopening of our district, which is scheduled to take place a few days after Labor Day. That, of course, is dependent upon the governor and what final decisions he makes. But as of right now, we are preparing to open. <clears throat> Mr. Piccarillo has put together a district reopen plan that was greatly uh, assisted by numerous committees, one a district committee, and then we had school level pandemic committees, put all their input together, and the plan that evolved out of that, Mr. Piccarillo will be going over. So I'm going to turn this over to Joe, because what he's going to say, although it's on the website, not everyone has seen it, and we ask you please check it, but Joe's going to give you the main uh, components of that plan, which uh, we believe is a reasonable one. So before getting into how to access this plan and maybe some of the components of the plan, it's important to just highlight how we got here. So re remember, we had to close down almost immediately in March. Um, we adapted well to online learning, but we realized that online le learning in the way that we, we enacted it wasn't ideal. It was the best of a situation we were in. So we tried to take a lot of feedback that we received all year from the community and from uh, different uh, teachers and students. We tried to make some of those changes so that now that we're in this situation now, we can improve upon it. Um, we did receive an over 100-page document called The Road Back from the NJDOE of ways to, to reopen safely. We have read that very carefully, worked with our county superintendent and other superintendents in the county to come up with a plan that has been approved by the county. But what led to this approval is, as Mr. D mentioned, we have a district reopening committee. We have building level pandemic response team. We have had a community meeting where we met with the entire community. We've met with administrators. We have been answering emails and phone calls constantly. So everybody truly has had their fingerprint somewhere in this document in terms of, of preparing us. We've even had students on the high school and the middle school committee. So, so we did send out a second survey. You'll remember that we sent a community survey at the first time. Um, that was just to sort of gauge what our, our families were thinking based on our preliminary plan. Then as we, we and we realized this was going to change as we developed our plan uh, and, and really crystallized, it crystallized a little bit more. So then we sent out a second survey. We had 798 responses to the second survey, uh, which I mentioned before is, is virtually, we, we don't have many more families than that. So this is a huge turnout. We had a question, if schools open in September, will you send your child or would you prefer virtual learning? To that question, 24.9%, so just about a quarter of families intend to have their child only go virtually. So before I mentioned the, the concept of the A and B and having half the students in the building, truly it's half of three quarters of the population. So I don't know who's good at math, but it's not, it's, it's, it's less than half. Um, and that's important when you're considering social distancing. Um, we did ask a question regarding to the uh, potential difficulty of childcare, because it's important to us. Mr. Diaz said it several times that we are, we are serving the community and, and the families here. I know that there are going to be difficulties regardless of the plan we set up. Our, our first priority is, is obviously the safety of the kids. We want to educate the kids, but we also we want to serve our community. So the question was, which would be a significant difficulty for child care? And we had that 31.6% of families, just under 32%, said that our current plan would provide a significant difficulty in child care. Now, that's not a small number. Um, but I think if you look at some of the other plans in neighboring districts and in uh, are the parts of the state, we've tried to come up with a plan that at least is a little bit more predictable and consistent. So 
when you have a, a full week of time that your kid is there and then the next week uh, they're, they're home. I've seen schedules that have a every other day and those days switch because they're five days in a week, right? It's not an even amount of days. So you maybe go one day, Wednesday, Friday, and the next week you're Tuesday and Thursday. Or they have a virtual day for all students in the middle of the week and it gets to be even more complex than ours. We've tried to create as much stability as we could. And, and in instances where it's still a struggle, those are the times you're going to want to email me and Mr. D. We have met with families already. We'll continue to do that because we, we do want to come up with a way that works for everybody. We're also a little proud of the timeliness. We had our plan out early. We, we presented it at the public meeting. And although it's changed a little, it hasn't changed gigantically. The, the basis, the skeleton part of the plan remains. And, and what was our first issue meeting, the first single issue meeting? That was early in July, wasn't it? Yeah, about a week after the, the road back came out. So we, we were very proud that we gave people information to work with early. I, I met with a staff member yesterday who needs accommodation, and she said that she hadn't heard from her district yet in terms of exactly what was going to be done. And that's, that's a tough one. That, that puts parents in, that creates ang more anxiety than is already created. So very proud of the fact that we got things out early. The single issue meeting that we had early in July was well attended. And um, I expect that the next two will be also. And hey, if you, if you want to, uh, if you're watching this video and, and you want to bother the superintendents of other school districts, you can. Because really, we were supposed to get this plan in 30 days prior to the start of the school year. Uh, our plan has been approved. It's July 29th. This is far more than 30 days prior. But you can keep an eye on the calendar. And if you're, you don't get a message, you know, tell them that you heard from Hopacon. They were supposed to have it 30 days before Don't the start of school. Uh, but the, uh, the last piece I want to share with you uh, regarding survey results is regarding transportation, because this is a question that comes up frequently. Uh, we asked, if you're coming to school, will your child be riding the bus? And um, the, the data we received from the last survey, almost 800 responses, was that only 36.2% of our of our families will have their children take the bus, so That's good for that distancing. that is tremendous for social distancing, um, and you know it, that was important for us to to know because I've seen other districts immediately start to uh, order more buses and try to get we we simply you know we no. wouldn't have the means to do that, and as we can see from the survey, it's not even it's not a necessary component. So we're there, we're thankful for the quick. Uh, thorough participation of, in the surveys from our family. When you, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the main page of our website. If you just go to hopakonschools.org, you'll get to this, this site. When you get to the website, hopakonschools.org, right here, in, in, in as obvious a place as could possibly be, you see these wonderful children running. They're running back to school. They can't wait. It says school reopening plan. Click here. And then once you click here, it'll take you, this is our, our page. This whole page here is all things that pertain to the entire district, to our entire district plan. It, everything from what we're, we're planning to do, which is A weeks and B weeks, which we'll go into a little bit more detail, to all the building schedules, to over 50 different frequently asked questions, to district technology plans, Anything that, if you like to read, well, we're, you're in for a treat. Then, over here on the left-hand side, you can click on your school building specifically. So, if you have a specific high school question, chances are it's not getting addressed in my district plan. But it will be addressed on the, the building level from the building level uh, pandemic response teams. Then you would just click on high school. You see their building schedule, period by period, each day. You see little things that are uh, specific idiosyncrasies to their building only, and you'll be able to go through all of those as well. So hopefully that's, that's a helpful resource. For all of these, if you have questions, you're going to email me, you're going to email Mr. D. At, even, even as we speak, I, I get emails that come through saying, uh, clarification on this. When that comes through, sometimes it's a... It, it turns out to be a frequently asked question. I just add it to our sheet, or I add a bullet point that clarifies it, and then I mark on the top of that 
main page when it was last revised. So today is July 29th. It's been last revised five minutes ago on July 29th. This is the way it goes. Um, so I would urge everybody to continue to check that, but we are going to have two big meetings for the public to answer questions and to clarify. So this is a, a market calendar thing. So Tuesday, August 18th at 6 p.m. will be our first meeting. And then Thursday, August 27th at 6 p.m. will be our other meeting. These are two meetings a little more than a week apart, right before the start of school, because we don't want any folks going into the start of school with any wonderings about what's going to change. Even if I have to answer the same question many, many times, it's worth it to have some comfort, comfort level from parents because this is, this is a tricky, tricky time. So that's the, the basic overview of the plan, of how we've communicated the plan. Um, but if you're, if you're looking for a thumbnail sketch of what is the plan in a, in, in, in a just kind of uh, short summary, we are doing it in half days, which is, is really a misnomer. It's more of an early dismissal day. But uh, early dismissal days every day. We will have an A week, so half of our population will come on one week, while the other half is learning synchronously at home. So they'll be on their Chromebooks at home watching a video of that teacher, and they will be able to, to go. If they have period one, they'll have period one just at home on their computer. The following week, those groups flop, and uh, the students that were at home are now in school. Now, there are, are notable exceptions to that. Uh, we are very lucky that in our district, first grade is small enough that they can come to school every day. So first grade will come every day in person. Um, and then, of course, um, Special, many special ed students will come every day because of the nature of their IEP. So uh, not limited to students that receive ABA therapies or LLD students or MD students or BD students. Um, but some of that is clarified here. I won't go into all those details. And then another thing to know is the governor clarified this very, very carefully. If you want to go virtual only, you're able to go virtual only. So imagine this. This, show you, this is like understanding what we're going through right now. We have 1,500 students, and we're now in the process of categorizing them. Are they an A student, a B student? And this has nothing to do with grades, right? This is just a, a, a way of, of naming. A students or B students, or V students for virtual only, and then all students for come every day. So we have four categories of kids. And Mr. D, because of his big old heart, which, which drives me crazy, but... The parents love this, has said that if a parent changes their mind, we're going to have to work with that because this is a new new frontier here. So, Mr. D, do you want to clarify what that process looks like if I'm a parent and I've already answered a survey and I want to change my mind? Yeah, very briefly, if the parent uh, needs to change his or her mind about sending their child to school or not sending their child to school, all they need to do is email me. Um, it, would be, it would be helpful if you uh, could give us some reasons not because we're trying to pry, but because as we do this whole thing, if we understand the reasoning of our clientele, there's a better chance we can serve them. But essentially, an, I, uh, an email to me, I will then enable that to take place. And that's a fluid thing. Change and fluid, two words we're going to use a lot because everything is subject to change depending upon the governor. Everything is fluid because as we learn more, about what the needs are, we try our best to serve them. Now, some of the questions that, that you may have is, how can you accomplish a full day's worth of learning into a, an early dismissal schedule? Well, let me clarify this, because this comes up a lot. Phys ed and health, in general, are not going to be offered in school. They are going to be offered virtually. Lunch is not going to be offered in school. Lunch will be virtual, right? So basically, a kid's going to eat lunch at home. You can't virtually eat, but you eat lunch at home. So the, the way this makes sense is if you take out of a kid's schedule lunch and phys ed, well, you've shortened their schedule. And now they have an early dismissal. And so this is the, health, the safest way we can do this because the road back document from the NJDOE was very, very prescriptive and restrictive when it came to how to run phys ed. No shared equipment. No changing. No, I mean, 
you name it, you couldn't do it. So it's much simpler for us to not just not do that and do that virtually. Um, some may say, but wait, don't kids have to have lunch every day? They have to have phys ed every day? They are having it. It's just going to be virtual. And this was uh, enabled and allowed by the governor. So this is different. Also, uh, there used to be a rule that was you have to have a certain amount of hours of instruction uh, in person. Again, this is, this is new times. We, have to, we do have to educate kids for a certain amount of hours, but it can be blended with virtual and, and in person. So every rule you thought you knew about education, chances are it's changed in the last few months. So we have been have to educate ourselves quite a bit. We have a number of items related to the reopening that I'd like to bring to people's attention. Number one, some of our staff members, due to um, difficulties of a, of a physical nature, need accommodations. So one of the things I need to do is we have a small number of teachers who will be teaching from home, and they'll be delivering the virtual instruction to kids in the school building. We will supervise those students, of course, but the, the, the teachers themselves will do the actual teaching. So we have a small number of people needing those accommodations. Because of that, we have a need for substitutes. So if you are listening to this and you have a qualification of 60 credits, um, college work and you, you're not going to get rich being a substitute, mm -hmm. but you certainly can be used and we will put you to work if you so desire. The third item, the one that has bugged me the most, has to do with families who mom and dad both work, what do they do with their child on a B week when the child is home if they're in school on an A week? I just got off the phone with our Alphabest after and before care group, and they are willing to do a daytime care program that would allow, if both parents are working, instead of being home a week, the student would be virtually instructed in the Alphabest program during the day. This is a biggie. Um, I realized that many of our families, that would be a struggle money-wise, so I am trying to work it out so that we assist them in the supervision of the kids. And if we can do that, that would lessen the price. So more on that to follow. We will certainly have that finalized by our August 16th single issue meeting, and that will solve a major problem um, for, for our clientele. We originally had talked about bringing those kids to school, but with the accommodations necessary, for example, if I have two, two teachers out who teach periods one, two, and four, I can put two classes together with one sub-supervisor. They're working. I have a supervisor of them, which, which covers us legally. And, and I just need big spaces to do that. And I had originally talked about the possibility of having those kids come in for virtual instruction. We would supervise them. We don't have enough people to do that. So we'll, we, the second best item that we have, and I'm very pleased with Alphabest as an organization, they have bent over backwards to try to assist us when we need it. I'm looking at possibly one location in the district where virtual kids would be allowed to come to school, do their virtual instruction with Alphabest, and if we can help them out in supervision, we would do that. So that, that to me is important. I got two phone calls on that just this morning. Uh, as people think things through, more problems become obvious, and the challenge of answering those questions is, is something that Joe and I enjoy doing because it, it, it keeps, it keeps my brain going at my advanced age. Joe, he's got youth on his side. We are, we are really, we are not stressed. We are not burdened. There are days where between us we'll answer 50, 60 emails on specific situations of people. That is our job. We get paid well, and we enjoy it very much. Now, one of the things that you mentioned was about subs. Yeah, we're definitely looking for some from some subs. Um, but we, in addition, we, we have hired some some folks recently, and it's worth it's worth mentioning. I 
but art, you could go through some of them. I, I do want to highlight, though, because it's related to, to the pandemic, we now have a diff, an additional nurse, right. a roving nurse. So uh, it's, this, is a, this is a great thing for us right now because it goes without saying how much nurses are needed. Um, but God forbid you have an emergency where you have a nurse totally uh, working on, on something that's COVID-related, which is, of course, you have to triage that. It's very important if, that, if an outbreak happens. And then what, what about the kids that still need to you know, receive medication. medication that they get, receive every day or insulin? or you know, So we can't drop the ball on any of these things. It's, it's a, truly a matter of life and death, right? So there, we're very thankful that the board was supportive in allowing us to hire a roving nurse. So we'll always have one additional nurse to work in the district. And we're a district small enough and the buildings are in such close proximity that that nurse can really travel from, from building to building to help with those necessary medications and things like that at a pinch. Um, Mr. D, you want to talk about some of our other new hires? You were doing a really good job. Why don't you continue? Sir? I, I'm, talk I'm, about Jeffrey. First. Yeah, I'm happy to. So um, <laughs> many of you that have been here in our district long enough in this community are familiar with Mr. Hollenbeck. Mr. Hollenbeck has served in administrative capacity in a variety of, of capacities in this district, a variety of buildings um, and roles. Uh, he is ne was most recently our uh, high school co-principal in addition to being a director of security. And he has now moved to the role of business administrator here in central office. So he has the, the pleasure or displeasure, depending on how you look at it, to spend more time with me and Mr. D. Um, but we are very excited for Mr. Hollenbeck and for the district because one of the things that we did not have the advantage of coming into our roles uh, is institutional knowledge of the district. And a lot of the work that we've had to do behind the scenes has been getting to know the, the community, getting to know some of the key stakeholders. And um, that's tremendously important, but it is takes a, a, quite a bit of time. Um, and having Mr. Hollenbeck, who, who does know the this, this students and the family so well, he can slip into this role and jump right in, which is really exciting for us. Um, and working with him in the last few days has, has already been really, really pretty right. fun. Right. And we'd like to thank Ms. Carolyn Joseph for her service to the district. Um, <clears throat> she's retiring, although she says she's not retiring. She is retiring <laughs> from business administrator work, and she will keep very busy, I am sure. Additionally, at our board meeting the other night, Ms. Stephanie Martinez, who is a science teacher in the building, was um, given the role of acting principal. Um, Mr. Bonato, who has served the district for many years, is on an extended medical leave, and she will be, she was an original candidate for the co-principal position that we had talked about previously. Given the circumstances of schools only being half full, we put that on hold, but Ms. Martinez will take over as acting principal on August 15th. Um, we are delighted to work with her. She has a strong historical knowledge of the district. She has a gigantic connection with our growing Latino population, and um, I, I am looking forward very much to working with her in a progressive manner. And again, why do we do this? We're serving our clientele. I said it three times now. Ms. Martinez will enhance our ability to serve a growing group um, in our district. <clears throat> We've had secretarial changes. Um, Joseph and I's secretary is, mo uh, is moving over to payroll. Ms. Brittany Euling from the high school will be coming over to the central office to work with us. So we have an opening for a high school principal secretary right now. We also have an opening for an English language uh, arts teacher at grade seven, and we were probably going to have a special education opening at the middle school. So things are busy, um, not bored at all, and uh, <laughs> we're moving as fast as we can. Times sort of allow us to forget some of the normalcy that we go through in a summer. We have had so many projects going on not related to COVID, that I just want to spend a short few seconds discussing because one of the projects is that all lighting in the district will become LED lighting 
and will save the board approximately $68,000 a year in electricity costs. Those installations are ongoing. They just started at the high school, and eventually every light in the district will become an LED light. If you drive through the back of the high school, you will see a bright green, beautifully lined new track that was finished the other day. This morning, I visited people using it already, and I got rave reviews. It's a beautiful, beautiful item. <clears throat> we ordered all necessary items for the new cosmetology lab. Some of the items are tough to get given the crisis, but for the most part, we will be setting up that lab in the very near future, and it should be ready to go in September, again, for a brand new program. The fitness center. No one has seen it because no one's allowed in the building, but it is an outrageously excellent fitness center. We're still awaiting delivery of the last items, but it is something that I must selfishly say I am able to use once in a while, and it is a magnificent opportunity for our kids for life skills and health skills and, and physical skills. Finally, the Board of Education at our meeting the other night, in discussing use of the cell tower revenue, they will allow us to put in new tennis courts up near the senior center. And this is something that will not only serve our kids in a district and our team, but it will also serve many members of the community who utilize that tennis, the, te the tennis court that exists there now. Even on 90 degree days, they're out there playing. God bless them. I'm very impressed. But uh, that's something that will be taking place in the near future, brand new tennis courts. Thank you for allowing us to catch you up on stuff. In order to sum up, I would like to do the following. A, I'm sincerely thankful for our community's understanding about the fluidity of the situation and the fact that some things have had to change. B, the support of the Board of Education has been outstanding. They have been efficient. They have been trusting. They ask excellent questions. We've had some of them involved in our committees, and I'm very thankful that their participation has been of such a positive nature. We appreciate the response of everybody. We, we, we humbly ask that you continue to give us feedback and that we will try our best to satisfy as many people as possible. Given a situation where 45% of the people in the state don't believe that schools should be open, we do. And don't forget, Pull out your calendars, pull out your phones, because these are two important dates. Tuesday, August 18th at 6 p.m. and Thursday, August 27th at 6 p.m. These are both a little bit over a week apart. Our, our plan here is on Tuesday, August 18th, to have the community there to show our plan, similarly to the way I'm, I'm sharing it with you today, but also just answer more questions re regarding what our plan is that was already approved by the county. Then, you'll have a little bit more in the week after that. You'll be able to probably generate a ton more questions, and on the 27th, we could tie up all of those last questions, and then you'll have a lot of peace of mind going in. So, th these are, are totally up to you. We will, we will try to get you all the information and be very transparent, but some people like the opportunity to be there in person and ask the question, and we want to be able to deliver that to you.